Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make Guys. Marco here and today we paint Infinity. I started playing Infinity in its second edition and I never really stopped playing, collecting and painting models for my Alec Force. This is great from a gaming point of view because I can field any possible list I can think of, but I hate how they look. Collecting and painting few models every year for several years, the quality output between the first model and the last one is crazily different, and I really hate this unbalanced look, so much that even if easily portable, I left the whole collection in Italy without a second thought. So, new year, new army, and in this video I want to paint a prototype figure for my O12 Force. Infinity models are not very speed painting friendly, and before tackling a large block of miniatures I feel the need of understanding better the scheme, its proportions and general palette, and what corners I can cut in the future. I gave myself 4 hours to complete the model, working mostly with a brush to really get the process under my skin, and with the intention of cutting the working time at least in half when I'll move to the serious uh, speed painting. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel, and if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community! O12 is an intergalactic police force, and the official scheme is a dichromatic blue and yellow, from the non-metallic bronze of the armors. Working on the crazy concentration of details of these models, a simple scheme based on powerful complementary colors is always a good choice to keep a high contrast and make everything easy to read in the distance of the gaming table. But I feel that blue and the glowing light blue are a bit redundant and difficult to properly separate, so I'll paint those parts tending to turquoise. This will become a subtle triadic scheme, with blue, yellow and a mix of the two to balance their different uh, visual weights. I'm super inspired and I want to dive immediately into painting, so we'll talk about how to prepare and handle metal figures in the next videos of the Infinity series, I promise. Like for all the other wargaming lines, these models are a bit larger than they used to be, more a true scale 30mm than 28 so the scale is not what makes them perceive as smaller or more difficult to paint, it's the crazy level and quantity of details in the unit of space to be way above the average. This makes every layer, every blend or panel line a smaller entity, even if the model itself is not really that small. But if you tackle the model with the right mindset and workflow, you'll see that the super crisp and well separated details work on your side much more than the smooth empty armor of a space marine for example. I don't change my way of priming for metal miniatures. The fluidity of Molotov Black is great to prime uh, microscopic details, without the risk of covering even the smallest ones, and it grabs metal even better than plastic. Remember to shake well your bottles. You want to paint with the pigments that fall on the bottom, and not with the colored water that sits on top. The natural metallic shine and this uniform coat of black didn't give me any useful information, swallowing all the details in too much light or not enough light, so I use a mid value neutral grey to set my general light, and to show the real shapes of the sculpt. Atomized paint naturally catches the raised elements, and with a good control on the trigger or using a low pressure, you can be sure that it doesn't enter inside crevices or even the finest lines. The main objective of this first layer is simply to make the figure more readable, so I can plan better the next steps, fine placement of the light included. I switch to pure white to fix direction and intensity of my main light. I set a strong but diffuse light, hitting the model almost perpendicularly, using the center of the helmet as my central axis. This kind of light works well with the static power pose of the model, and it delivers more drama and pathos than a standard zenithal, but thanks to the soft diffusion it will not pop too much next to the future models of the army, that will probably have different light settings. This approach works well for uh, skirmish models, but big, dense armies need a more uniform finish to create a better suspension of disbelief. Now I have a great starting point for the brushwork. I'm not going to use a lot of transparency effects here, and the sketch of the volumes will be apparently covered by opaque layers, but these few minutes dedicated to understanding shapes and volumes will make every step easier and visually more coherent. Remember that every layer and brushstroke counts in delivering the final look, even the most subtle. 
I want to catch the vibe of the anime style, colorful cyberpunk that is the trademark of the game, so I use the highly saturated and opaque chimera colors from the very beginning. Painting transparent layers over a grisaille or a sketch of the volumes, or using inks or contrast paints, always makes you lose some saturation in the optical mix with the grayscale underneath, and here I need the full power of my tones. This doesn't mean that I cannot dilute my opaque paint to take advantage of the luminosity of the white base, and make it easier to spread. To obtain the perfect consistency I simply add glaze medium and water. The scheme is made by four main colors, blue, black, yellow and the light turquoise, that I must work in separate, independent moments because of their powerful differences and their lack of common tones, but even if I set a separate palette for each one, I keep working their progressive stages towards higher and higher lights like a single entity. I base the blue parts, then I move to black using more opacity, to see how they interact. Now I know that the blue needs more saturation and opacity in relation to the black that I really like, and I can fix it. I use contrast a thermatic blue for the glowing elements. It has the perfect color for the subtle contrast I have in mind, and here the transparency is useful to render the effect, creating also extra contrast with the super matte finish of the other elements. I use a mix of a warm brown, violet and black to mix the base for my non-metallic bronze. I want to push on cold tones in the lights, using warmer sensations in the shadows to boost the contrast and make them pop, this will help also to separate better these elements from the blue armor. Painting non-metal it's always a good choice to start from a very dark value, to have the largest spectrum of contrast possible. I don't use pure black for its boring lack of tones, but I still want a value close to pure black. I apply a single light coat of Griff Charger Grey to the base, just to have the complete picture of my base tones. I increase the opacity of the blue to match the intensity of the other parts. Again, you probably feel that the black and white sketch wasn't essential, but it made my work on the blue parts incredibly simple and quick. Thanks to the sharp black lining, all the details were extremely easy to read and catch with the brush, and even the darkest tones still maintain a subtle modulation that is going to guide and keep coherent my whole work on the lights. To make my life easier in the next phases, I switched to the Scale 75 Artist Line. Their dense, heavy body consistency is perfect for a fine control in small areas, and I can create good, smooth blends even with very short brush strokes, simply pulling and spreading the thick paint. My palette for black includes uh, different warm tones to create contrast with the cold blue elements in every new layer. In this stage, I just want to move the lights on black of a couple of value clicks. I'm not looking for the final complete modulation, because I don't have the full picture from the other parts telling me if I'm pushing too much or too little. So I paint a couple of lights setting a general direction and I move to the blue parts. My blue modulation is pretty simple, and almost straight from the tubes. Here is the secret to handle short transitions on small surfaces. Start working from the edges. Setting from the beginning the borders that naturally catch more light, I create a solid frame for the transition, an anchor for its starting point and the limit for the darker end. I understand in a clear, instant way the real size of the working area and the size of the transition I need to feel it in an harmonious way. Plus, I start creating definition and rich edge highlights from the very beginning. This way I always use on the edges the right color and value, and I don't have to come back later to add a super precise line on top of a finished blend, because the edge is part of the blend. I used the same method on the black parts, but it was difficult to see well the brushwork and explain the concept. To read well all the shapes and elements in the distance of the gaming table, I need to push the definition to extreme levels, exaggerating internal contrast and the panel lining. I start sketching the metallic reflections with a raw sienna. 
Again, I start from the edges that naturally catch more light with their sharp angles, and I loosen a bit my control on the brush to paint the unpredictable little movements of the light on a shiny material. Some of these shapes work, some don't. I will push and refine the happy accidents and cover the other parts. This take in these tiny elements is minimal, and I can go back and forth on a whole element in seconds, using this sketch style to produce a natural, organic finish. I jump to yellow ochre, much lighter and with a more powerful yellow note. Here I'm a bit more controlled, refining the shapes I set before, but still using a relatively large and painterly brush strokes. The helmet is in the middle of the main light, so I need more opacity and saturation here. Then I simply start adding white. Again I work from the edges, to understand better the extension of the highlight, and blend it with the preview shade. You need uh, strong value jumps to simulate metal, so don't be shy with the quantity of white, even if you lose a lot of saturation. To fix this issue, after the highest light, but before the extreme, conclusive highlights, I apply a light filter of Liquitex Green Gold over everything. This step softens the transitions, brings back the saturation, and adds chromatic complexity, introducing a realistic green note very common in real life bronze and gold. The general value goes down, but you get a smoother and more interesting finish, and uh, more space to add powerful highlights that are the key of the metallic illusion. If you're looking for a substitute, contrast Plague Bearer Flash has a similar complex hue. I paint an extra light after the filter. But before closing the transition, I want to go back again to the other main colors, to better balance their lights with this new situation. I could have edited the video in a more linear way, but this is the real flow of painting, a never ending back and forth between elements that change constantly. Only in a second time I'll use this experience to plan a more linear speed painting workflow, trying to balance the loss of some of this complexity with the need for speed and efficiency. The light turquoise parts need more light, and a better modeling of their volumes. I simply add more white into the mix, following the volume set in the sketch with the airbrush. The tricky part here is uh, to follow the fine pattern, but using a small brush with short bristles is easy to slide around the hexagons. And I fix again the blue parts. I feel that they stand out a bit too much, and that's because I forgot the warm tone of the shadows that's a common theme in the other elements. I use a violet from the golden high flow line to glaze deeper shades with warmer sensations. I bought these colors for the airbrush, but I quickly realized that they are amazing for glazes. They behave like inks, but with a softer impact, easier to balance and control, and they dry matte. At this point, you know the drill. Load the brush, unload the brush on paper towel, and apply with coherent directional brush strokes. Load, unload, apply. Load, unload, apply. Boring, but effective. But boring. <laughs> That's why I use glazes mostly to fix or to perfect transitions. I close the work with my secret weapon. Windsor & Newton Titanium White is the whitest and brightest white in my collection, and it's perfect to paint extreme highlights on non-metal. These little touches are something beyond the highlights, 
they are the extreme twinkles on top of the maximum lights and uh, you should hear a bling when you paint them and here is the final result 4 hours of happy painting with the brush for a good hero skirmish quality I almost forgot how fun these models are to paint the problem is that they are addictive and I can't stop now I put the ascent on time because I'm planning a speed painting session on his brothers based on what I learned from this more traditional workflow but remember that time and speed are not so important and they are a direct consequence of experience and skill these are the important things to chase so enjoy your painting make beautiful models and don't stress too much about timing if you like this video give it a like and subscribe remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials and if you want to support the channel and my work check my patreon page and join the community or maybe ask for a commission see you next week guys